This is Dr. Noman Siddiqui using the TraumaCAD software and demonstrating how to use this program to correct a hind foot varus deformity. Um, as one can see in this image, there is clearly a deformity on the left foot, which involves a calcaneal varus uh, with respect to the tibia. And I'm going to demonstrate how to make the correction um, of the calcaneus with a cal when there is a deformity um, in a varus attitude. Now, this in normally, and if you've watched in the previous videos, we've always gone through the first few steps of identifying the image. And in this image, the same thing. This is a Saltzman view, which is as close as it resembles an AP view, and we're going to select that. We're working on the left side, so we're going to click left, even though we have both images in our in our uh, view here. But the next part we cannot do because we have not placed our, a calibration marker on here. So how do we uh, adjust for that? Well, the program allows you to do it manually, and you can pick a point. So if you know if uh, some if there is a certain measurement that you like and you want to calibrate to that measurement, you can use that, and that can be done. Um, one of the simpler ways, many of those, many of you that perform trauma would be familiar with the fibula having relatively a certain measurement when you put screws in and that could be one option and that could be measured. So once we're done calibrating our image using the other features we can go ahead and start deformity planning and in this case the first thing we always want to do is as like I like to do is find out how much deformity there is and in this patient I take the uh, calcaneal bisection with respect to the long axis of the tibia, and I know that there's a 34 degree deformity, uh, varus deformity that I have to correct. So how, how do I plan for correction? Well, if I look at not only the, the angular correction that needs to occur, but also the translational component that is um, present, and how do I measure that? Well, if you extend this angle line down, uh, and make it at the same point of the calcaneus, these two points can be measured. And if you measure those, it would tell you that not only is the deformity 34 degrees, it's about 17 millimeters uh, medial. The calcaneus is 17 millimeters medially displaced. And if you remember, we mentioned this earlier, that the calcaneus normally is either along the long axis of the tibia and more so usually found half a centimeter to a, a centimeter and a half on the, on the extreme end, lateral to the long axis of the tibia. So this person not only is um, past normal, but in a more medially translated position, hence the, the symptoms they may be experiencing on the lateral side of their ankle. So to correct that and to plan for that, one of the things I like to do is usually to perform a closing wedge or an opening wedge osteotomy. Um, and in this patient, I, I'm planning to do a closing wedge osteotomy. So how would I go about planning my closing wedge? Well, the simplest method, and since, and I repeat this on here, is because um, you do not have the luxury of using TraumaCAD while you're performing your operation. Um, so I plan intraoperatively uh, creating long lines along the anatomical bisection of the deformity. If you take the anatomic bisection of the calcaneus and draw a line perpendicular to it, you, you get two points that can serve as an axis guide for you to perform your osteotomy. Similarly, if another point is also connected here along the lateral wall of the calcaneus and taken to the apex of this previous point, it will bisect the long axis of the tibia uh, and this is the perpendicular bisection of the long axis and tibia. And again, that creates a nice wedge for us to plan out how much of a wedge we need to remove so these deformity can be corrected. So once that is done, I like to measure that point, those points, and it tells me that about 20 millimeters of bone wedge uh, has to be removed for these deformities to be corrected by strictly um, a closing wedge osteotomy. 
So if we remove that wedge, we are left with a gap within the bony architecture. And now we can rotate this bony fragment along the, along the, um, the closing wedge uh, defect to correct our deformity. So if we select our fragment, we will use the superior aspect of that bone. If we rotate along this hinge point, we will see that these lines tend to get more parallel as we make the closing wedge. However, they do not line up exactly where they should because as we mentioned earlier, the long axis of the calcaneus is always about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half lateral to the long axis of the tibia. So since we did not do our correction exactly at the apex of that deformity, there is a translational component and we can do that by just rotating excuse me, just translating the calcaneus lateral. And now we have a more normal appearing calcaneus with a, with a, um, that is rectus with respect to the tibia with no more varus deformity and slight valgus deformity. And this can be something that can easily be taken to the operating room um, for preoperative planning, knowing that only a two centimeter wedge needs to be removed and the calcaneus needs to be translated laterally approximately two, mil, uh, two centimeters as well to get a more rectus position.